Hello, lifelong learners of Linux. I'm going to assume that you are here today because you want to learn more about awk, the very powerful uh, pattern matching, character substitution, and general parsing and reporting scripting language that was developed uh, by some engineers and scientists at Bell Labs and has kept going strong for decades. Just as a review, I wanna look here over on the left and remind you about the general format of an awk script. My purpose here today is not to really teach you awk. I'm gonna assume that you can uh, find many materials that are tutorials. Uh, I wanna show you today a couple examples of the use of awk because I wanna impress upon you that sometimes the best way to learn a language or to learn it better is to look at it and in use and study the scripts and just make sure you understand what's going on. And then, you know, that is something that you'll be able to put to use for your own self. So again, let's remind ourselves that an awk script can uh, consist of three basic uh, partitions or sections. Uh, every script doesn't have to have all three, but it's important to know the purpose of each of the three. So there is the begin section. And in the begin section is where you would want to perform all the setup or um, pre-processing of your, of your script. Then we have what's called the body of the script. And the body of the script consists of a series of patterns and actions. Typically, or always, an aux script is working on an input file. Typically, that input file is a set of records, comma separated values, uh, maybe the output of an Excel spreadsheet export in a um, pipe separated format, maybe the Etsy password file on Linux, which is colon separated. Uh, in any case, each of these patterns and associated actions are performed on each line of your input file, where we are going to check that input against the supplied pattern in the order that you see them in the script list. When a pattern is matched, then the construct is to perform the action associated with that pattern. So this happens for each and every record in the input file. And then there's the end section or end paragraph in our script. And these are what we call the uh, post-processing or teardown actions. We want to do these things after the line by line processing. So to drive some of these concepts home, uh, let's take a look at a couple scripts and dissect them. But before we get going, uh, 
let's make a note of the fact that I am in my user accounts home directory in a subdirectory called bin. So I can look at my present working directory and I can see it's forward slash home, forward slash Deborah M, forward slash bin. And just to make my life easier, I like to make a personal bin directory and to then add that path to my system path so that it is always the first one that is searched to make my scripts and programs easy to find. So my first script that uh, we will talk about um, has a little tie-in with Linux system administration. Uh, we know that all the user accounts are in the ETC PASSWD uh, file. And let's take a look at the first few records in that. And we can remind ourselves that there are seven fields. They're colon separated. The first field is the uh, system or user account. Then we've got the placeholder field used to hold passwords, but now it's just a placeholder, the user ID, the group ID, uh, and etc. We can look in the five section of the man page system. So the, the fifth chapter in the man page and remind ourselves of all those colon separated fields, the seventh of which is the user command interpreter or shell for that account. So it would be interesting for a sysadmin to know if there are any accounts that have been added to this file that run shells and maybe don't look quite so familiar. So I have written a script called awk, let's see, accounts with shells. And it's not a very long and laborious script, but let's look at it and walk through it. So our input for this will be the Etsy password file. So you can keep that in the back of your mind. It's gonna be uh, a lot of records that are colon separated. We have a begin clause and the begin clause is what is inside the first set of curly braces. We're going to set the field separator to a colon so that awk knows how to recognize fields. And then we're going to use two formatted print statements. You can look up formatted print in your awk manual that. Um, you have been supplied on the learning management system, or if you found this video another way, I'm sure you can search for the fourth edition GNU manual from O'Reilly, and it's named Effective Awk Programming. So let us Back to the script. We've got the shebang and the full path to awk specified with a dash F, which will uh, indicate that we do expect 
our input data to be supplied through standard input. Uh, the formatted print is printing two new line characters. This percent %s represents some string that is something supplied after the comma that separates the format specification from the data to print. We only have one piece of data and that's going to be this constant string, a title. And then on the second formatted print, we again have 1% S and all that is is a set of underlined dashes. So that's the end of the begin. And now we have the body of the script, which just says if field seven uh, has in it some regular expression that just includes the string sh. So if sh is somewhere in field seven, then we want to print a formatted string allocating 10 spaces for it. Uses the shell and then something at some other piece of data. And so these are the two pieces of data, field one and field seven. We can remind ourselves that field one is the account name and field seven is the name of the command line interpreter. So let's run the script. Let's run with Etsy password and pipe it to the name of the script and we get our report. We see that we have a couple new lines. We've got the name, the set of dashes, and now we know that root and Deborah M use the shell bin bash. Bob Smith uses the shell bin dash. And Serena uses the shell, uh, just sh, the born shell. Now, my Etsy password file on my system is not, you know, unwieldy in length, but there are many servers that have hundreds or maybe even thousands of user accounts, system and user accounts. And it would be beneficial to know if there was any account that slipped its way in there with a uh, command line shell um, that we didn't recognize. So now I'm going to talk about a second example. And this example has to do with um, decryption a little bit. Uh, so I have a set of text here that I will print out to the screen that we can see is completely garbled. So someone's been trying to send some kind of, you know, encrypted message, perhaps. Okay. And we would like to take a step toward deciphering this message. Well, one step that we can take is to analyze the character frequencies because there's some uh, well published material on character frequencies in the English language. And we could use that information to perhaps know what character substitutions to start with. So I have a script that is written to do that exact uh, thing. 
and let's look at letter frequency freak dot arc. Okay. And we'll look at it a screen at a time. Keep in mind the sort of gibberish that we have. Um, and that will be the text that we want to process with this oct script. So we have, uh, and, and G oct is just a sort of um, enhanced version of oct. So I have the shebang and the path to G oct. A couple comment lines. We are assuming that our input is all lowercase. Um, and there are ways to enforce our input string to be lowercase. Look up in the man system TR, and you can uh, think about how you might do that. So we have a begin section. So here's the curly braces that define the begin. And all we're going to do at the beginning is create a variable that includes all 26 letters of the alphabet. So a, a variable that is a string. Then we have the body. So the body goes from here to here. And what are we going to do in the body? We are going to set a variable len equal to, this is a function. You can look up functions in the manual. And it just gives you the length of dollar zero is just the entire record or line that came into our script. So we're setting a variable len to the length of the line. And then inside of a for loop, we're going to uh, do some things iteratively from this point to the end right here, okay? So we're gonna walk through from position one through the length of the line. And for each character that we come across, we are basically going to store that. So this substring is a function and all it does is take the ith position. So we walked I from one to, to the length of the line. So for each position in the string that's coming in, we're going to look at that position, length of one, so only one character's worth. And we're just going to then walk through the string that's coming in character by character by character. Now, the next line is interesting. There's a function called index. We might not know what that does, but we can look it up. So index takes as its first position a string in. And we need to search in that string for the first occurrence of something we want to find. And index returns the position in characters where that occurrence begins in the string. So it is the index position in the first string where the second set of characters begins. So here's the example of peanut. A-N is 
right here in peanut. So index would return three, okay? The third position. So index is one of those um, functions which is not zero based like we have in most programming languages and arrays and so forth. Index actually starts counting at one. And if we get a zero returned, that means nothing was found. So now we have a clue about what index does. And so we can see that for each letter that we are walking through from our input text for each letter across that line, we are looking for it in letters, which is here, and we're going to find the index of it. So which letter of the alphabet is it numerically? And we are going to store that in a variable called LTR. If LTR is greater than zero, because we just read about the fact that zero means nothing was found. So if LTR is greater than zero, we're going to increment a associative array. So an array whose index position is the number one through 26, because that's what LTR can possibly be. It is, holds a possible index of somewhere inside this array. So we're gonna increment the value for that letter which we found as we step through. And that loops, loops, loops until we get to the end of that string. But as we know from the way awk works, is it does this for every single line in our input text. So for every single line, it's going to look at that whole line and go through each character one by one by one by one by one and sort of fill up this array with numeric counts for each letter that gets found. And it's going to just keep building up, building up, building up. And then our end clause is just going to loop from 1 to 26, so through the possible letters, and print the, again, one character position starting at whatever, starting at one, two, three, four. We're going to just count through the, the letters string, okay? So we're going to print a one character substring for each of A, B, C, D, E, F, all the way through. And then the count that we had previously calculated for that particular letter. So you can study that a little bit more. You can pause the video and take a look at it and noodle, noodle it over. But let's run the program and see what happens. So we have the ciphered file. So let's cat it cipher. And we are going to feed that as input through the pipeline to our 
ox script named letter frequent freak dot awk. And we get output. And we can see for each letter, there is a count except for some letters that didn't have any occurrences. But what we can see interesting is one letter stands out as having the most occurrences, and that is the letter N. And if we did some research on the English language, we could find some material online that said in the English language, the most occurring letter on average is the letter E. So if the N represents an E, we may be able to start our way toward unraveling the meaning of this file. So those are two little scripts that you can study and hopefully give you ideas for writing your own scripts and also uh, ways that when you see things you don't recognize, you know, look in the manual, find uh, the PDF uh, or a web page version of the awk manual. And there are lots of different examples in there as well. Uh, I know that as you work through examples, create scripts of your own, you will most definitely get better and better and see the power of awk.